All right, guys, it is day five of the CR125 project assembly, and weather has not cooperated at all today. So I've been up for about five hours now, cleaning stuff in the backyard, and I am completely soaked right to the bone. So I'm just gonna quickly take you back and show you what I got cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna take a drive out to Chilliwack after this and pick up my heat gun as well as stop off at gnarly parts out there and see if I can get some some nuts for the bike because uh, I'm having a real challenge trying to find some nuts. I have ordered a bunch from the States. Now if they get here after I assemble the bike, like if I find some nuts somewhere else that's fine, I can use them on my 89, uh, 125, 250 and 500. But let's just uh, go in the back and see what I did get accomplished today in this wonderful weather. So here's what we got going on back here today. I'm very fortunate to have this very large tree over top of me in my backyard, but with how hard it's raining, it, uh, it didn't help me out a lot today. So let's just have a look at some of the items here that got done. So there's the fuel tank, it's all cleaned up. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see the discoloration in it at all here. Let's take it outside. Well, there you go. You can see the color difference right down there. Now, I'm going to have to try and fix that up. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the other stuff here. So here's the front brake. I managed to get it really clean. Quite happy with that. Uh, retained the finish that was on it. I mean, that's a really good hardened paint that they put on there. And check what else I found. So as I was taking the tank out of my bin, uh, if you watched the video from yesterday, I had one of these shock protectors that I hit with some heat and <laughs> totally destroyed it. This one's got a little bit of a nick in it right here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shave this side down a bit and even it right out. Other than that, it's uh, in really good shape. It's solid up here where the holes bolt in. So... There's a bunch of the fuel tank, tank parts. I cleaned all of it up. Some of the bolts I'm definitely going to have to replace because they are rusted. I still have some more things to clean. I've got uh, the fender washers to clean up, round up bolts and stuff for the fenders. And yeah, I think that's about it for the roller. All right, we are off to Chilliwack to see if I can get some of the nuts that I'm missing for the bike at the same time I think what I might do is see if they've got a clutch and brake lever there as well they got a pretty good selection of levers out there um, but they could be for more modern bikes we'll have to see I know the 90 CR shares parts with gosh all the way up to probably 2001 a considerable amount of parts and then from 2001 up to even today uh, it shares a few other parts all right guys so I kind of got rained out outside today so I decided that I would start throwing the decals on the plastic um, I can't remember where I got these Honda decals. They're pretty good quality. The red on the back might be a little bit dark. I'm not sure. That could be the actual color that they're supposed to be. But they look uh, fantastic on those rad shrouds. I really like the looks of that. I still got to apply the other one. Hopefully I can get it lined up in the perfect spot. It's always a challenge. Now these decals here are from goodguydeal.com. They're really thick and they're really good quality. I know sitting on the paper they look a bit wrinkly, but when you get these things applied to the number panel, uh, they look fantastic. And any slight imperfections that you might have in your older plastic, uh, they, they don't tend to show them as much as the super thin ones do, which is great. And yet they're still really good quality uh, tackiness on the back. And the cut is almost perfect. Uh, I find sometimes that it might be a little bit too perfect that if you don't get that decal in the exact spot that you need it, like the nearest millimeter, um, you're going to be having to trim some off. 
Hey everyone, it is day number six on the CR125, and today we are going to have to replate some bolts. Unfortunately, some of the bolts that I plated uh, did not plate correctly. I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm going to filter out my uh, plating bath today and try and get some of the contaminants out. Now, I've got the bike put away because unfortunately, I think that somebody was uh, trying to break in through the fence in my backyard. Uh, I went up and I fixed the whole thing, but uh, chances are th that somebody's targeted me to, to take the bike. I've got this walkway that goes all the way down and behind our whole complex, and uh, it's pretty easy for somebody to get in here and, and take something. So let's have a look at those bolts that I'm going to have to replate in the tank that we're going to be doing today. All right, so after cleaning the tank up yesterday, you can see even with a piece of steel wool, um, it has scratched the surface quite a bit. It looks like there might be a tiny amount of oxidization that I didn't see before. Now, I'm not going to get carried away on this tank. I'm going to make it look good, but I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to try and get out every single scratch. I want this bike to be ridden. It's not a showpiece for in somebody's, you know, living room or in their garage. Um, so I'm not that concerned about getting those deeper scratches out and when you get the deeper ones out It really becomes uh, a show tank after that It's it's not something that you want to be riding with because you wind up removing quite a bit of the plastic All right over here are some of the bolts that I'm going to be replating Okay, and you can really see these ones here did not hold up well at all I'm gonna have to put those uh, in the cleaning tank and then in muriatic acid to get rid of all of that. This one here didn't hold up too bad, but again, you can see it on the end, not good. So right here are the ones that we're going to be uh, replating today. So quite a while back now, I had somebody comment on my plastic restoration video. And he made a suggestion that could possibly make things easier for me and have a better quality job when I'm done. One of the key things was to get myself one of these, a palm sander. Now I got lucky, I was able to pick this up for 20 bucks off an auction site, it's brand new, it's never even been used. So I'm going to put a piece of 400 grit sandpaper on here, I'm gonna start right at that and just see how much it takes off. I don't wanna get carried away here. Uh, this tank is not oxidized that bad. And then I also bought a very small sanding block that I can hand sand as well. And the nice thing about the sanding block is it's perfectly flat and it's a harder rubber. It's flexible, but it's harder. So you are able to really cut finer edges and make the tank really pop. Okay, so let's get a piece of 400 on here and crank it up and get started. So this is the same bottle that I used to install my tires and in here is the same mix. It's just uh, a little bit of dish detergent and some regular house water. So I'm just going to spray the side like that a bit. is a sander is way faster than what you can do by hand so don't get crazy and sit there and sand for a long period of time okay so the first sanding of the tank is done it gets a lot easier now uh, that was to mainly get that stain part off and the oxidized plastic what I wound up doing is with the orbital sander because it gives you such a, a smooth surface when you're sanding I was able to go all the way down to 180 grit paper. Um, you may even be able to go lower than that, I'm not sure. But uh, 180 grit um, definitely makes things a little bit quicker. So there's still parts of the tank that are dark, like that one right there. Um, and up in here, I'm not going to take that off. I don't want to go any further with how much plastic I take off. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, 
I'm pretty sure it's just stained, but I just don't want to remove any more of the plastic. The body of the tank is mainly what I need to get to look like new anyway, and uh, not this area in here, which will be covered by the shroud. Okay, so now we're going to do the whole tank in 220 and then just gradually move up in all the different grades of paper up to 1000. Alright guys, so I found a problem with using the Orbit Sander. It's not that big of an issue, just something you have to be uh, wary about. Do not move it across quickly. Um, so right when I got near the end there, I was using like 800 and 1000 and I was just kind of going fast like that. You can't do that. You got to just kind of go nice and slow with that Orbital Sander all over the place because if you do, go fast see that mark all the way across there that was from the orbit sander that one's actually fairly deep and I'm not that concerned about it because you don't see it but you might be able to see a bit of it on here I'm not sure it's pretty hard to see but there's little tiny swirls where I went really fast with the orbit sander and uh, I'm basically gonna have to redo this side with 800 all right guys it's been about four hours of sanding and I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with it. I know it doesn't look all that great. It's got all this white all over it. So I'm going to try something different this time uh, rather than going for the heat gun, which is normally what I do. And uh, that pretty much gets rid of all of this white. Okay, the white is basically very fine scratches. And uh, I'm hoping that this works, and if this works, it will probably become a new procedure for me. So I'm going to be using product, which I've never used before. Generally, I will hit it with a heat gun, and then I will dry polish it. Uh, today, I'm going to start by using Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Dual Action Cleaner Polish. Okay, so I've got my drill and one of my brand new pads here. And what I'm going to do is just put it directly on the pad like that. And uh, this drills variable speed. Okay, now we're going to just put it in one area like that. And let's see what happens. Check that out now. See how that turned out. Now it says you're supposed to use some special type of white for this, but that shop towel worked just fine. Hmm. Well, I'm impressed. Okay. So let's try this. This is a dry pad. This is what I typically use after I'm done with the heat process. And I'm just going to use it on this side of the tank now that I have um, used that Meguiar's and see what happens. She looks pretty good now I think what we'll do is we'll take it out front and uh, set it on my truck see how it looks in the Sun now what I'm looking for here is any whiteness so you know the white that we saw I mean you're gonna see it here right now Well, that actually doesn't look too bad. And I didn't get all the scratches completely out. It's still got some fine scratches in it, but it's it's nothing to be really concerned about when you start to look at it from that angle. That actually doesn't look too bad. 
Now I'm just wondering if I should heat up the other side or not. Maybe I should just uh, do the McGuire's trick to the whole thing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. Still, right down in here, I can still see a little bit of white. I think I'm still going to heat up the other side because I really want to see what the difference is between heating and the Meguiar's. So let's go heat it up. There we go. So we got to be very careful with this. Just trying to create a, a film. On the plastic. There we go. Started it. Now the thing about using the Meguiar's is there's really no risk of damaging the plastic that you're restoring. Using a heat gun, you better practice on something you don't care about. Or else you could seriously damage it, especially a fuel tank. Because this is pretty much not replaceable. We got the Meguiar's and the dry polish. Turned out really nice. Now on this side, instead of doing the Meguiar's at the beginning, I used a heat gun instead. Now I can see a couple of spots where the heat gun left a little bit of white. I just need to touch that up. Cool it off one more time. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the Meguiar's on top of the heat treatment. I mean, I can't can't really lose there. If anything, it'll just be a plus plus. Because I do think that the heat treatment works very well. Other than the couple of deep scratches in the sides that I did not want to try and remove due to their depth, I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, like I said in the beginning when I started restoring it and polishing it up, this bike is to be ridden. It's uh, not a garage queen. Well, unless whoever buys it decides it to be, but if they choose to take out the two scratches that are in here, they, they could be taken out. Looking at them now, but you would lessen the strength of the tank for sure. Well, I don't think it looks too bad. You can see those scratches right there they're they're pretty deep and uh, I didn't want to take too too much off but she's definitely shiny I'm not really worried about the white down in this area I didn't even try to get rid of this little bit of white because the shrouds are going to cover that up same thing with over here not worried about it I got one little nick down in there that I didn't want to take any more of the plastic away. 
staticky right now. It's just grabbing onto everything in the air. It's just completely dusty. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up. Uh, what are we at here? Day six? Yes, we're at day six. Uh, it doesn't seem like I got a lot done today, but that tank was a huge job. Uh, typically, the tank takes like... Gosh, I think some tanks I've spent like 40 hours on. It's been absolutely crazy. Um, and I did that tank up in about f uh, six hours. Now, it's not absolutely perfect. Um, looking at the scratches that are in it, could I get those deeper ones out without compromising the tank? Maybe. But that's a lot of plastic in that one area, and I really just don't want to want to do it. I just don't think it's a good idea. I'd be better off finding a different tank that is in perfect condition without any deep scratches that just needs to be restored. All right, so the other thing I did was I zinc plated some bolts that uh, the plating didn't take well to before. All right, so that's going to wrap up the day today, uh, day number six. I want to thank everybody for coming out and watching my channel. If you're new to the channel, leave some comments, subscribe, share with your friends. If you're a returning subscriber, I thank you very much for coming back and watching my videos, and I will catch you tomorrow.